This dial laser has one feature that I have been wanting for a really long time, and it actually has to do with this little cable right here. All right, let's... Bleeding? Wow, I got my nose. Okay, so now that my nose is better, let's actually jump in. So this is the Otour Alfero, two words, I don't know if I actually say right, Laser One. And this is kind of like the little brother of the Otour Laser Master Engraver two, which I've done a review of in the past. You can check it out right up there. But this is the much cheaper version. And it actually comes with some different laser modules. Uh, we actually have one, two, three. And then you pick which one you actually wanna buy and we'll get into what those are and how they're different depending on your situation. But let's actually jump in and set this up real quick. Now what's nice about this is this actually comes pretty much already put together if I can get this thing out of here. So you're really not gonna have to symbol. So this just comes packaged already like this. So you guys can see that the setup for this is pretty simple. You just take it out of the box, you put it down, you attach your laser, and you're pretty much good to go. We're gonna be trying out three different versions of the laser module. Um, this is actually the one I'm most excited about, but there are two other versions that you could get with it. So this is the laser that comes standard with the machine. This is the LU2-2. This is a, I think a 1.6 watt laser. And this one's actually really nice because it has a really small laser dot, meaning that you're gonna be able to get really fine engravings. You're just not gonna have a ton of power with this. So you're definitely not gonna be doing any cutting. And this is a 0.07 by 0.06 millimeter laser dot. And that is compared to the LU2-4. So the step up, and there's two different versions of it. You have the short focus, which is this guy, and the long focus, which is this guy. You might see pictures of the long focus um, with this nozzle attached to it, but we'll get into what this metal piece is here in a minute. Pretty much all of the laser modules, they have this little shield that will slide right onto it. This is interchangeable and you can put it on whichever one that you're gonna use. And this does a really good job of blocking most of the light, but you'll still always want to use safety glasses. Now the LU2-4 short focus or SF, they recommend for engraving versus the long focus, which they recommend for cutting. Keep knocking this off. Both of these guys are four and a half to five and a half watts. The short focus has a 0.12 by 0.15 laser dot versus the long focus, which has a 0.17 by 0.25 laser dot. So a much bigger dot, so you can still do engraving, but you're gonna get a lot finer details with this. But if you wanna get your finest detail, the actual cheaper laser module is gonna be your best option. You just won't be able to use as many materials as you can with the stronger ones. I really just wanna talk about the frame for a minute because this is probably the biggest drawback potentially with this machine. Obviously this is like half of what you get with those larger machines. So you only have like one Y axis. And because of that, the overall top speed of this guy is half of Otour's larger and more expensive machine. So this is 5,000 millimeters per minute versus 10,000. But the actual laser modules are interchangeable. And so you can actually have the same laser module and the same power that you have with the more expensive machine. And you can take that one and put it on here, which is basically what the short, which is basically what the short focus and the long focus version are. Now, in terms of the brains, they're using pretty much the same motherboard. You're gonna connect it the exact same way to software. I really like to use Lightburn to control my machine, but you can also use free software like Laser Gerbil, works totally fine as well. In general, Otour's machines will pretty much show up in any laser software that is out there. So you're not limited to a single piece of software. One thing I did notice is you'll probably want to secure this down to your work area, just because this is really easy to move around, especially when you're getting uh, way out here uh, at the end of this like cantilever beam. So this moving just a little bit um, moves this whole machine. And they do give you some holes on these acrylic legs uh, that you could either put a zip tie or screw through. I didn't do that with mine. And for the most part, I found it was doing pretty well. You're really not gonna run it even at the top 5,000 millimeters per minute speed with these lower power diode lasers. But just know the overall frame design is where you're getting a lot of your cost savings. So you're not gonna be able to engrave something as big and you'll have to take a little more time to make sure everything's secure when you're actually using the machine. And speaking of that work area size, you're looking at 180 by 180 millimeters versus the larger 400 by 400 millimeters for the Laser Master Engraver. Now this machine comes with some pretty good safety features. If you ever bump this machine while it's running, it will cut the laser beam. If you disconnect it from the computer, it will cut the laser beam. If you disconnect it from power, because it could still draw power,
power over the USB connection. I'll also cut the laser beam. And if it senses that this hasn't moved and there's a really long exposure, it will also cut the laser beam. So those are great safety features and they're real similar to what they offer on their bigger machine. But as always, really the biggest thing you need to take into account is this is just out in the open. So putting this inside of some type of enclosure is gonna be really nice because you're gonna be able to vent out all of the fumes and the dust that it's making. And then also if it's completely covered, it's gonna be able to protect your eyes from the laser beam. Now the second safety issue that I always come back to with these diode machines, they actually fixed with this tube right here. And that is because they provided you a way where you can add an air assist to the machine. So the other end of this is basically just hooked up to a really small compressor that comes separate, but they're pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link them down below if you wanna check it out. And they have this little nozzle that the tube hooks into that you have the air shooting into. And this really does help with one of the biggest safety issues with these machines is the likelihood that you'll probably get some type of flare up, especially cutting. And so it does a really good job of actually putting out those flames so you're not getting as much charring around the edges. So let's talk about some of the tests that I did. Pretty much with any machine, I always wind up doing the Mandalorian, but because the Book of Boba Fett is coming out pretty soon, I thought I would do that. Now, this one was actually with the LU2-2, which is the lowest power, but also the smallest laser dot. And so it did a really good job of getting detail. And then I stepped it up a little bit and actually went down the rabbit hole of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse the other day, re-watching a great movie. And I did the movie poster, so you guys can see this again with that same cheaper laser module. And I thought this could be a really good example. You guys can see that text at the bottom. It did a really good job. And actually because that laser dot was so small, I could have increased the resolution to get even more lines per millimeter. But just to save on time, I actually found this was giving me a pretty good resolution. Now a question I get a ton is what settings do you use to get that result. It varies a ton depending on your material, what actual machine you're using, and now what actual laser module you're using and what focus distance it is. So what I really say is you need to test it out. And there's a few test files that I'll wind up using when I'm using new materials and new machines. And I'm running all of these files from Lightburn. And if you guys want to use these files yourself, there's actually a link down below to check them out. So the first one that I did was an engraving test. Now there's actually quite a few on here and I even mislabeled. This should be LU2-4, not dash F. I don't know what I was thinking. And then these up here are LU2-4 as well. Uh, but the big thing is this is the cheaper, the LU2-2. And so you can see kind of the gradient that you can get. This is on birch plywood. You can see how the LU2-4, even though that says dash F, how you're getting a good bit more charring. So you can definitely see you're getting a lot more power. So you're able to get those really dark values at higher speeds. So that's really the big difference between these two is you're gonna be able to do engravings faster because you can get to your black point quicker as well. And then you can also see it's starting to actually engrave into the material. So you're gonna be able to do a little bit of cutting as well. And I did the same thing for the long focus. And actually this one right here, I didn't have it focused correctly, but this one I was able to fix that. So you can tell even having it at the correct distance makes a pretty big deal. But especially between this and this one, you can see there's a huge power difference, but you're also getting a ton of charring. And so really that short focus one I was finding was giving me a lot better result for engraving, which is what they designed it to do. All right, so now let's actually talk about cutting. So you guys can see my hand behind here. This is the short focus. And so it was able to go through, this is five millimeter plywood. Uh, and it was able to go through when I was running it at 100 millimeters per second, both at 75 and 100% power. Now this is compared to the long focus version, which I did a couple different versions of, and you can see I was able to cut it out at faster speeds. So this is up to 200 at 100% power. So this one had the air assist on, and you can see you're getting a lot less charring versus this one. Now I was able to get a little bit more power out of this one, so I was able to cut out just a little bit more, but you can see how much cleaner of a cut you can get when you're using air assist. So air assist isn't just a safety feature of putting out those flames. It's also gonna help get all of that soot and debris away from your material. So you're getting really clean cuts with it. Now I also did basswood and this was with the long focus. Again, that's LU2-4, not dash two, just because I'm dumb. And so you're able to cut out a little bit more. Basswood is pretty 
soft. And you could pretty much run that same file on a bunch of different materials. You can actually see right here, all of the materials that Otour says that you can engrave and or cut depending on which laser you use. But I encourage you guys to use some type of test file because you'll be able to dial in your settings and see what works best for your situation. Now, if you're wanting to get into lasers, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, I think this is a really good option for you. Now, it's several hundred dollars cheaper than the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro, and it's usually at least $100 cheaper than the other machines from other diode companies. But again, that comes with a drawback, and the biggest one is just in the actual work area and then the rigidity of the frame. But if the work area works for what you wanna do, this is super capable, and I like that they're not tying the actual laser module to the machine. They're giving you a lot of different options. So even though this one comes with three different options, in the last year, they've put out a lot of different laser modules, and they've been upgrading them really quickly. So I could totally see you buying this machine and then getting a different laser module down the road, and they're really easy to switch out. Now, maybe you're comparing this machine to a really cheap CO2 laser, like a K40 or 40 watt, and the CO2 laser is just gonna give you way more power. So you're gonna get to the 40 watts. It's really designed to do a good bit of cutting. So if that's what you wanna go after, you might wanna go that route, but they're also heavier, they're bigger, they're usually more finicky, and with those 40 watt units, there's some safety things that you're gonna to wanna to add to it before you really run it. Now we've been talking a ton about the Big Brother version of this machine, so let's jump into our full review of the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys 